Happy to see you here. In this video, we're going to solve a really interesting exponential equation, 1 to the x equal to 3. And it's not like a general equation, it's not like a common equation, so for example, 2 to the x equal to 3, we can easily solve it with log. But right here we all know that doesn't matter what a power, 1 to the power 100, 1000, this is equal to 1 all the time. But right here we have 3, which is really tricky and really interesting moment. And let's try to show that right here we'll have like no real roots and let's find also all solution that we will be able to solve it, because right here here, this is a very tricky question. So first of all, let's take natural log on both sides. So natural log 1 over 1 to the power x on the left equal to natural log 3 on the right. Yeah, so we find these natural logs on both sides. And let's bring this x right here because this is main log property. That's why we of course uh, apply log on both sides. So x times natural log 1 equal to natural log 3. Natural log 3. Okay, let's divide both sides by this natural log 1, because this is a constant, let's divide, so x equal to natural log 3 over natural log, natural log 1, yeah? And we all know that natural log 3, this is some constant, I don't know exactly the value of this natural log 3, this is a constant, which is really good, but natural log 1 equal to 0, so we cannot divide by 0, so no real, no real, real solutions right here, no real solutions right here, no real roots if you're talking about roots. So no real roots. What about complex roots? How can you find in this expression, how can you find complex roots? 1 to the x equal to 3. What about these imaginary roots? I'm going to start with this Euler's identity right here once more. So we have e to the power i times theta, this is Euler's identity, equal to cosine theta plus i times sine Data. This is our Euler's identity and we need to know it, we are going to solve it according to Euler's identity. And let's check this identity real quick, if theta for example equal to 0, if theta equal to 0, so we will have like e to the power i times 0 equal to cosine 0 plus i sine 0, which is absolutely correct, this is equal to 1, and this is equal to 1 as well, and this is equal to 0. So Euler's identity is good, we just check Euler's identity. Okay, but right now I want to start with substitution because we need to write this complex variable right here. And let's work with, with an angle. We have this complex variable right here. And if you're talking about an angle, let's write this angle right here. So theta equal to 2k pi. Let's work with this 2k pi when k is integer. So k is z. If k is z, so we have k equal to 1, 2, 3, and a lot of integers numbers. So this is maybe main important step. So the first step is this Euler's identity, as I told before. And the second step is this substitution. So theta equal to 2k pi. This is really important step right here in our case. Because if theta equal to 2k pi, instead of this expression, we will have like e to the power, e to the power i times 2k pi equal to cosine, instead of theta we have like 2k pi and plus i times sine 2k pi, okay? So we just change this theta by 2k pi. I hope you understand this step. And right now let's go with these special cases. Let's see what about this expression. So we have like k equal to 1, 2, 3. So let's start, for example, for k equal to 1. If k equal to 1, we will have this expression. So instead of k, we plug in 1. So e to the power i times 2 pi equal to cosine 2 pi plus i sine 2 pi. Yeah, and let's look. We, we all know cosine 2 pi and sine 2 pi, so let's look a little bit about it. So cosine 2 pi equal to 0, yeah? equal to 1, sorry, and sine 2 pi equal to 0. So we will have like this expression give us 1, this expression give us 0 times this complex variable, we will have 0, so 1 plus 0 equal to 1. So this expression i e, e, e to the power i times 2 pi give us 1. This is first and really important step. Let's go to the second special case. So for k, for k, k equal to 2. If k equal to 2, we will have like e to the power i times 4 pi equal to cosine 4 pi, yeah, cosine 4 pi plus i sine 4 pi. And let's look, let's, let's look about these variables. Cosine 4 pi equal to 1 as well. And this is equal to 0 as well. So we'll have the same situation. So this expression 
equal to 1 all the time. Well, of course, k equal to 2. Yeah. Okay, and let's check one more, one more case right here. If, for example, k equal to 3, so 4k, k equal to 3. Okay, we will have like e to the power i times 6 pi equal to cosine 6 pi plus i sine 6 pi. Okay, and let's look closely. This is like the same period. This is equal to 1 all the time. This is equal to 0 all the time. So we will have the same one. So one really interesting conclusion about it. Doesn't matter with the, about this k, of course, integers. Yeah, 1, 2, 3, 4, doesn't matter. All the time on the right hand side, we have this one all the time, like 1, 1, 1, we have all the time 1. So as a result, I read this expression right here. As a result, e to the power i times 2k pi equal to 1 all the time when k is integer, yeah? Can, k is integer. So this is really important step right here because we are going to solve this according to this question. Okay, as I, we proved this before and right now we had this question in the beginning. So we had in the beginning that 1 to the x equal to 3. But let's plug in, instead of this 1, let's plug in this expression with the complex variable, which is really good. Let's plug in instead of this 1 and let's solve this. So we will have like, we will have like this expression. So e to the power i times 2 times k pi all raised to the power x equal to 3. So this is our 1 right here. This is our 1 and really important moment, this works only for k is integer. So this is not like a general solution to this moment because we, we work with integers right here before. Okay, how can we solve this? Let's take natural log on both sides. So we will have like natural log e to the power i times 2 times k times pi times x equal to natural log 3. Yeah, and right here, this all, all complicated expression if we, uh, that we have is a power, jump right here in the beginning. So we will have like e times 2 times k times pi times x times natural log e equal to natural log 3. Okay, let's divide by i 2 k pi right here by i 2 k pi and right here by i times 2 times k times pi okay i 2 k pi and i 2 k pi so on the other x right here this is equal to 1 so as a result our root will be the next so our x will be equal to natural log 3 over i times 2 times k times pi. We can easily multiply by i and then we cancel with this one. So if we multiply by i, we will have i square equal to minus 1 and x equal to minus i times natural log 3 and all over 2k pi of course, but this is not like a general solution. k cannot be equal to zero and k is integer, integer number. So this is solution, but with, with our, with our cases, k is not equal to zero and k is a whole number, k is, sorry, integer, yeah? So this is our solution to this problem with a complex variable, which is really important for us because as you can see, as I told before, we cannot find real solution. Yeah, no real solution. So only with Euler's identity. But this is not like a general solution. This is not like a common solution to this problem because it works only when k is integer. What about k is not integer? We all, we don't know about it. Maybe like 1000 roots right there. I don't know about it. But when k is integer, we can easily say, and when k is not equal to zero because we have in our denominator, we can easily say that right here we'll have this complex complex root. But what about all, all, what about real numbers? When k is real number, all know, all don't know about this. Thank you for your time. Have a great day. Definitely don't feel bad if you got this wrong. If you have your own uh, solution, if you have your own notes about this problem, it will be really interesting to read about it. And of course, to 
To read to your suggestion, how can you solve this problem? It will be really interesting. My approach is according to Euler's identity, about this identity, and I hope you understand this explanation. But definitely don't feel bad if you got this wrong. Maybe you have your, your own solution. Maybe you don't agree with my solution. It will be really interesting to read about it. Thank you for your time and have a great day. See you in the next videos. And take care and definitely wish you all the best in your mathematical adventures.